coming up with mobile learning in the classroom, critical thinking with games. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin. And I'm Zoe Falls. And this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom, and today we're talking about critical thinking with games. So I have SimCity up on my iPad, and what I like about SimCity, especially for critical thinking, is you have to think through the steps you're going to make to play the game. It's not mm -hmm. something where you can just be passive. You have to think about the choices you're making and how those choices will cascade and affect other choices you make later on. And so for the critical thinking aspect of it, there is an element of thinking about how one aspect will affect another. Mm -hmm. So problem solving through the, the end goal. So if the end goal is to develop a zoo for your mm -hmm. city, what steps do you need to take to create your zoo? Um, and for students, especially you know, over the summer when, mm -hmm. they're, when they're playing, this is a great way for them to still be engaging in mm -hmm. learning and working through different things, but still getting to play a fun game. Yeah, like and Sim City. Fu fun, uh, one of the other things that I like about the games we're going to talk about today is they're not about fighting, they're not about winning necessarily, they're more about long-term engagement and problem solving. The second piece that I really think that is important to try and do when kids are playing this, because it really depends. Some kids really like puzzles and other mm -hmm. kids get discouraged really, really early. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not working for me, I'm moving on, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. So there are two ways to deal with that that are both important to developing this problem solving uh, ability. One is, uh, if they can work with somebody else. So they've got friends and they're all playing the same games. They show each other how to do things. They discover things and tell the other one. And when they're really discouraged, sometimes they say, just you take it and you do this a little bit. And then they see the solution and learn from that. So that ability to share the task and, and to share what they've learned. And the second thing is to really stop if they don't have somebody or um, if you're traveling and they don't and they don't necessarily have somebody around them that they can talk uh, talking to adults really matters right. explain to me why you made that choice tell me why you're doing this and not that you'll get a real insight into how they're thinking and solving problems and you also start seeing that even things that seem random and they're like I wouldn't make that choice they actually have a reason sometimes they are trying trying especially in these kind of games sometimes they want to see distract destruction sometimes they want to see things burning or blowing yes. up or whatever it is and then they're really doing problems solving for that goal. Well, and they think so differently about mm -hmm. it. And one of the things, so I had, a, I had a group of students in my class this past semester use the, the Sims game to talk through how they would create a virtual reality game for children with disabilities, physical disabilities, learning disabilities, mm -hmm. and how through that sort of immersive experience, they could help teachers, help speech language pathologists learn to work with these kids mm -hmm. or encourage these kids to continue to be successful. And so for the students, like their part of the critical thinking was less the game itself, but thinking about how to use the game, yeah. the affordances of the game. And so I think keeping that in mind when you see you know, younger children working with the game is sometimes it's not really about the game at all. Yeah. So engaging them in that dialogue about what is going on can be a really powerful learning moment for them. And for you, by the way. As adults, sometimes we're learning as much, if not more. So what do you do in SimCity? So in SimCity, you build a city, um, which sounds really basic, but you have to be able to manage the money. You have to keep your public happy. You have to have a high enough population to warrant additional buildings. And some of it is waiting around. Mm -hmm. um, so I know for some kids, it can be a little impatient. Mm -hmm. with the game because um, I know I get impatient with the games because you pay you play it for you know 15 minutes and you have to wait until um, it's built until, it's until built. you get money and all of that yeah um, but the cool part of that is they get to track their progress so mm -hmm. they can set goals with their friends yeah you know as a parent maybe you could set goals with your kids over the summer mm -hmm. let's see how high you can get your population and then you know it's less about winning the game, mm -hmm. which I think, again, is a really cool way to keep them interested and keep that positive attitude going. But they go through, and this one is fairly um, basic. basic. It's mine. It's mine. <laughs> That's why it's so basic. I just started it so, uh, recently, so you can 
kind of create a building and put another residential zone somewhere and we'll get 52 more people living there once we stop building. And what you can see is that it's taking time and also because you need some resources to fill it up, that will take time as well. And gonna make you a factory. Yes, we gotta make a factory, but if you build factories and you build houses next to them, then people start complaining, why do I have a factory next to my house? And so the complexity grows as your city grows, and this is a really great way to learn because it does take a little bit of time, and when you're making a, a, if you have a problem like we just had, you need to put a road in there because otherwise your factory can't supply your city. So lots of learning in there. So that's SimCity. I think I played SimCity as a fairly young person and that was a long time ago. And uh, you've definitely... I play SimCity, <laughs> yep. Yeah. And it's really, really fun for adults. It's definitely fun for kids. And again, it's uh, for me, it's like some other games where the goal is really not combat and you don't have that immediate feedback that sometimes is not so good because then kids are all about the immediate feedback. You've got to wait. There's a, there's a learning or just in waiting for things to happen yes. and having the patience to develop over time. So that's, uh, that's part of uh, SimCity and, and working and playing with that. The next one I wanted to talk about is a, a game called Plague, Plague Inc. actually. And in Plague Inc. you are the plague. And you get to learn about diseases and the whole idea is that uh, you are you can uh, start a new game in this case where bacteria i didn't advance to the level so i don't have other deadly things and you can uh, you have different game di difficulties and let's play casual because i'm not very good at this i named my disease this is my disease <laughs> Yes, I can't <laughs> pronounce it, but it really doesn't matter. <laughs> and you can see that uh, this allows you to, uh, you have the ability to play with the genetic code and to change uh, the nature of uh, the disease, in this case, the bacteria. So you can say, is it an environment gene? Um, oh, that costs money. We're not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and start. I like these games when they are free. I don't like paying for them, although you can. And what you can see is nobody's sick. So you see on the bottom, it says how many people in the world are infected. And the first thing you actually have to choose is where does it start? So um, we're, we are starting in Egypt and it infected the first person. And what I love about this, and this is what we know about plague, is they have to transfer around the world. So you can see that there's boat traffic and airplane traffic uh, throughout the world. And as that advances in dates, uh, there, there are, uh, there's the ability to infect other places. So as you go along, you can see Nobody's really infected. You can see everything in Egypt is uh, business as usual. You can look at the different aspects. There's no medical research about this disease because it hasn't really hurt anybody. And on the side, you have this DNA structure and that DNA thing helps you develop your disease as you go along. And if you really want, and this is something I like, you can speed things up, oh, really speed nice. these up because uh, that that, especially at the beginning, you need to speed things up because nothing is happening. You've got eight people, right? And it's a good way to keep, again, the kids yeah. from getting bored with the game. Yeah. Um, and you can see that you get notices and as things pop, now we've got 30 people sick and now we can go to my disease and you can look at the disease. Where is it in Egypt? When did it start? How many people are infected on a daily basis? Eight people, that's not enough. If we want to really have an impact. And you can see that you can play with the symptoms, with the transmission on, uh, and with the abilities of the disease. That's especially about drug resistance. So it's a kind of a funny way to learn because you're learning backwards. You're learning right. from and the bad side. And you're <laughs> learning to like be the, di you're modifying yeah. the disease. Cause there's a board game mm -hmm. that, ha that looks very similar, but oh, instead okay. of creating the disease, you're, you're fighting it. You're fighting the disease. So you kind of, so I think this would be a nice way to pair Mm -hmm. a digital game with like with a family a board night game. board game where mm -hmm. you learn on the digital device 
like how the disease spreads, how you can manipulate the DNA, what goes into that, and then with the board game, you can then work the other side of it and fix the disease. And yeah, and the, your goal is really to spread worldwide and to kill as many people as possible, <laughs> which sounds horrible, <laughs> but through that reverse, you're also learning ab about what kills people. So diseases can be highly infectious, but not very deadly, which is the first disease I created was like that. It was highly infected. I infected the whole world, but almost nobody died because it wasn't killing people. So, uh, and then the cure was developed and then uh, I lost the game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, or one, depending on how you look at it, if you're human. But uh, that's basically how it is. So you can see the date is on top, and you're moving along, and you develop your disease. And as it goes on, the map gets redder and redder. And that's the goal in this game. And again, if you you're really thinking about how is this critical thinking, it's really about. Talk about it. What is your strategy? Why did you choose that strategy? Did it work? Did it not work? Uh, the game has clues that come up once in a while, but it's a great way to develop that, those skills. Okay, so if I do want to be successful next time, I know I have to develop a disease that's more deadly because if you give people enough time, they'll develop a cure. Well, I think that's one of the key elements with, with both the games we've looked mm -hmm. at so far is that they sort of demand that the, the child interact with another person, yeah. an adult, a friend, mm -hmm. a combination of both, siblings. And I think in a lot of ways that makes the games more about the community. They're not sitting there just in isolation yeah. playing this game. They're gaining valuable social skills. They're gaining that critical thinking through conversing with others and figuring out what strategies their friends mm -hmm. are using. And this is, this is really an important skill that is not often emphasized. Uh, the two things that you want to build from here, one is to have these critical skills, you got to talk about it or write about it or interact with somebody else about it. You don't develop those critical skills just by playing. Some people do, but a lot of kids don't because they're just kind of clicking on things and see what happens. You start developing those critical skills when you have to communicate with somebody else. The second piece is that uh, playing games does not have to be a solitary activity. Mm -hmm. And I think people who play games know that, but a lot of people who criticize games as a way to learn always focus on people alone in the rooms and they're mm -hmm. in the dark and they're playing a game. And that's <laughs> totally not what's happening. So my kids, when they play Minecraft, for example, do that there are four or five kids. They may be actually on different Minecraft mm -hmm. platforms, not even in the same world, but they're all in the same space physically and they show each other things and they share things. And that's a huge part of how they play. So there's tremendous social aspect to gaming that is sometimes neglected as, as we talk about about it. The last one I just want to take a peek at because I haven't had enough time to look at it in full details, but this is the Oregon Trail and this is an adaptation of the original Oregon Trail, but it's got better uh, graphics and richer everything. <laughs> and uh, it's not just text, which was my original Oregon Trail. Oh. Uh, with, the with the little green with and the, the little tiny little, yeah. yes. But anybody that remembers Oregon Trail, this is great and it's all about expansion going west. So now we're starting to look for uh, wares and we don't have enough, but you can help harvest, right? And if you help harvest, you get some money. So it's more thoughtful in that way and we get some money and some food. We're getting some things and then we take it to the tavern. So you can see it walks you like all good games. It walks you through the first few steps just to make sure that you know what you're doing and you're collecting things uh, to make sure that you can go on your travels and then all the adventures in the travel. So you can see how this game works and starts developing uh, all of those skills as you set up on your journey. And you see that you can get the map and you're on the road. We're really fast and we got the coin. This is fantastic and it goes to the next level. So you go through the levels, you figure out how to travel and where to camp and all of that. And that's a really, a really fun game. Again, where do you get the critical thinking? You get the critical thinking from the discussion, from working with others, from describing what you're doing and why you're doing it. So it's fun, it's great, but uh, it also involves uh, quite a bit of thinking. So this is Oregon Trail. So today on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, we talked about critical thinking with games, and there are lots of other games you can do this with, and we'll see you next time on Mobile Learning in the Classroom.